What's up everyone, Excelsior and I'm about to watch The Eternals which just came out on Disney Plus Hotstar so it saved me the hullabaloo of going to a cinema hall and watching it. Alright, so without any further ado, let's get this watch party started. Okay, away we go, like Rick says in Rick and Morty. If you haven't seen Rick and Morty yet, what are you doing here? Check it out, man. Okay, in the beginning. I don't think I've ever seen a Marvel movie begin like this. Alright, so it's a little bit of a scrolling text introduction. Because I guess we are not used to seeing these characters in the MCU till now. So, they're talking about how the Eternals were sent to Earth, I guess. They're talking about a mission, but I guess the mission means that they were sent to Earth to fight the alien deviants. These guys are also aliens, technically, but in human form, you know, tomato, tomato. Okay, a slab-like spaceship is flying across our sun, seems like it. And their main god, Arishem, has conjured a little sphere of golden energy that goes into Salma Hayek. All right. And she says, it is time. Okay, then. Time for the Eternals to get their soups, I guess. Power up time. You guys remember... Uh, you know, cartoon called Centurions, in which they used to get, you know, uh, beamed down from the space craft that was their headquarters. And they used to say, power extreme. And all the paraphernalia of their heavy duty, crime fighting, super powered gear used to appear and, you know, get attached to their exosuits and stuff like that. All right. Icarus and Cersei. Okay, and there is our little blue marble, you know, the great view of Earth that people who have gone into space and especially the Apollo astronauts who have gone to the moon have seen. Okay, we are in Mesopotamia, 5000 BC. Okay, a little guy is cutting a fish. I guess his dad is catching fish. Okay. Sumerian. Yeah, I guess Sumerian was the language at that point of time in Earth's history. Yep, it is his father. Whoa! Father is gone because of a reptilian deviant and here comes the sunshine, the Eternals five of them as far as i can see drop onto land and there we go so icarus shoots energy out of his eyes and this one is super speedy kind of like you know in agents of shield how yo-yo can do that heartbeat thing in which she covers as much ground as she can within one heartbeat. Oh, sign language and Kumal Nanjiani. Go South Asians. Angelina Jolie. Bane Chali, Angelina Jolie. Fashion as and Jesse Scarlett Johansson. Okay, so these five powered up Eternals are killing the deviants and okay okay flying around shooting energy beams out of his eyes and boom there we go hero shot looking up okay so us humans us tiny puny humans are obviously in awe of these Eternals 
and that black slab of a spaceship appears. You know what it reminds me of? 2001 A Space Odyssey. Both the movie and the book, because even in the book it was a monolith, you know, a black monolith that was sent by the aliens to trigger life and intelligence actually, to trigger intelligence in life on Earth. Okay, so I guess the rest of the Eternals have landed from the spaceship. Okay. The tribes people are a little afraid, but one of them does his mind control and makes them drop their weapons and kind of, I guess, forget about them. Okay, so Icarus is healed by Salma Hayek's character. And yeah, I think this is going to be the Eternals montage. Not exactly montage, but a set piece. A <laughs> footballing term right there uh, shows all of them, you know, in one glamour shot. I'll call it poster shot. Let's call it a poster shot. Okay, what is Cersei do? Time, ding, ding, ding. As soon as that first bell, that first note starts to play, I can tell that it's. Pink Floyd's eternal song, Time, that's playing. As Cersei transforms a simple stone tool into a huge, not huge, but hugely impressive golden sort of artifact. And there we go, there is the Marvel Studios logo build up. Okay. I'm enjoying Time, you know, by Pink Floyd and Time in general. Okay, is this going to be a golden makeover for the logo? Doesn't seem like it till now. All right, it's the usual red and white, which is my favorite color combo, you know. And we are in present day London. All right, artifact. Oh, that stone tool that she had shaped into a golden knife is on one of the billboards. And here is the modern Oh, the modern avatar of the Eternal, played by Gemma Chan, Cersei. Okay, she's taking the underground. And I'm just loving this, you know. I mean, it doesn't matter how much they paid for the rights to this song, to play this song in this movie. But totally, totally fitting in, you know. Because 5,000 years, okay, so 5,000 BC plus 2,000, 7,000 years have passed. And now we are in the present, as present as we can be. Oh, and now Cersei is a museum scientist. Seems like Wonder Woman, doesn't it? She's also a curator type thing for a museum. But that's the DC universe. This is the Marvel kinematic universe. And yes, I know I said kinematic because the origin of cinema is kinema, you know, kinetic images, kinema from the Greek. Okay. Okay, so she's taking a class for kids, I guess. Ah, talking about an apex predator. Apex predators are sharks you know and i hate sharks i mean not as a creature but because i have galeophobia all right she's asking for an example of an apex predator something is happening earthquake the world is shaking okay that's quite a big earthquake didn't know london was susceptible to earthquakes but all right, we have suspended our dis disbelief, you know. Disbelief, suspension is very important. Oh, a huge artifact was going to fall on a little girl, but Cersei uses her power to turn it to dust. Transmutational powers, I guess. Okay, no harm, no foul, and we are into night time, London. Somewhere below the piers along the Thames, I guess. What is this poor stray dog 
Oh, poor thing is gonna get eaten by a deviant, I guess. Oh no, but the deviant goes back into the Thames. Disc scene. Party time. Magic of the Eternals is happening and Sprite is playing a trick multiplying them all, replicating them into many many versions of themselves so it's a dozen or so Sprites and Circes Oh! <laughs> Fender Bender! The boyfriend is getting the normal people like us out of the way and the deviant is spreading its tentacles to figure out which ones are real and it's got sprite but something's happening somebody has entered the scene obviously it's going to be another eternal there we go i think it's going to be Icarus. Yep, seems like it. Richard Madden, is it? Yep, he makes his grand entrance into the modern world. Okay. Whoa. A double decker bus, I guess, was going to crash into them, but Cersei turns it into rose petals and the driver is safe, but the deviant is after them. And I guess Icarus is going to make short work of this deviant. Let's see how they go. Oh, the deviants are regenerating. They have developed regeneration powers. Very well put by Sprite. Did that thing just heal itself? Mm -hmm. This is upgrades. But all right, let's see how this fight goes. Down into the tens goes the deviant. And is it going to run away or is it going to rise again? As you may have noticed, watching along with me are my good friends Darth Vader and Dr. Yoda. I call him Dr. Yoda because he's a doctor of the mind, you know. But getting apart, uh, Star Wars are also excellent. And what reminded me of this was that the ship on which the Eternals have arrived on Earth is called the Domo. And today I was watching chapter 3 of the book of Boba Fett. And in that, the mayor, Mokshays, has a major Domu character who is the assistant kind of guy who they capture at the end of the chapter. So, oh, that rhymed. Capture at the end of the chapter. Nice. So, let's get on with Eternals. So, the limit of Cersei's power is that she cannot change sentient beings. She can only change inanimate objects. And she tells her boyfriend that they were told not to protect humanity from anything other than the deviants. Uh -huh. So the boyfriend, Kit Harrington, I mean played by Kit Harrington, mentions the legend of Icarus and that is why the name of the main eternal is Icarus because he was in Greek mythology a person who made wings you know, and stuck them together with wax and started to fly, but he got too proud and then he flew too high and too close to the sun and the sun obviously melted the wax from his wings and he fell to his death. So that is kind of a, you know, moralistic story that, you know, pride goes before the fall. Actually, it's not that. It's haughty spirit goes before the fall. I have to give a shout out to quite interesting the excellent quiz program hosted by the inimitable Stephen Fry 
on BBC Two for that piece of information, that nugget of trivia. Oh, okay, back to eternal. Okay, so they are saying that the global earthquake has some sort of a connection with the blip or the snap of Thanos. But I'm guessing that it's going to be somehow connected to the Eternals and the Deviants. Let's see how this goes. All right, all right, all right. So Babylon has become the largest city on Earth and it's 575 BC. Uh, so Fastos is doing that Iron Man thing, you know, moving designs around in 3D space to make a sort of a schematic or a diagram and I'm guessing that he's making some sort of a weapon or something but let's see so there's some sort of tension going on between Icarus and Hina and Icarus says that they need to trust Arishan's plan for this planet and I think Hina is not having it you know completely she's not trusting it completely but then I guess Angelina Jolie, <laughs> you know, she's always carved her own path and there's no reason to think who well she do any different with this character. 